Troubleshooting conveyor building. This is going to apply to exactly what we're going to be doing tomorrow when we're on a job site and anytime you're making a sales call where conveyor belts are operating. You want to observe the conveyor belt in motion. Get a mental picture of what's happening. So, you want to think about things like Sam brought up just a little while ago. Transition distances. Is the troughability there? Uh, what kind of belt are they having? Get a speculation in your mind and after you see enough belts you might you might be able to actually determine, are we going 200 feet a minute or are we going 400 feet a minute? Sometimes you can just tell by the way the belt's operating. You can get a, at least a window. Um, you want to look at how the belt's being loaded, how the belt's discharging, is there any peculiarities to the structure? All those types of things. Loading points, tail pulley, head pulley, take up area, troubled area. If you've got a tracking issue going on, Let's find out where it's mistracking. Let's isolate that in our mind. But this all has to do with observing the belt while it's in motion. Conveyor belt maintenance not only includes proper care of the, of, of the belt itself, but it also obviously has to do with the structure that it's running on and the maintenance of the frame and accessories. Somebody here earlier brought up a really good point. If we got a belt that's over tensioned, you're going to be putting a lot of stress on drive systems, on gearboxes, on pulleys, on shafts, on all the, whole, the whole system itself, what collectively would be known as the prime mover. All, that, all those moving parts are going to have a lot of additional stress put on them. Sometimes belt failures might represent themselves in chronic bearing, bearing failure or shaft deflection. Something gets out of round in the, on the shaft or the head pulley and the tail pulley. Those are going to be more obvious things. Once again, you have to ask yourself, that's the symptom, what caused it? First step is design and, and inspection form that encompasses all aspects of each conveyor. Inspect the conveyor system when it's shut down and empty. Belt damage should be marked and repaired when possible. Well, that sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? Okay. But again, what do you want to ask yourself if you see belt damage? Jeff, Jeff hit it. You want to know what caused it. You see the, you see the symptom, now what caused it? Inspect the splice for any damage or signs of fatigue. What kind of fatigue are we going to look at, say, in a vulcanized splice? What are we looking for? Delamination. You can see it maybe on the edge of the belt. You'll see where you can see the, the, where the biases were at a step splice and you might look at the side and see the plies that are kind of separating. What about a uh, mechanical splice? What kind of failure things are you going to see? Well, there's at least three of us that should know this. <laughs> Coming, out. Coming out, pulling through. What kind, of a, what kind of a failure might that be? If you see it pulling out from underneath the splice. Tension failure, exactly. You also might see things like, uh, if it's a steel fastener, you see things like metal fatigue, particularly under the skirting, where it's, where it's dragging on the skirting. We'll get more detail on that a little bit later. Good point. So he's talking about a, spl a belt splice, a mechanical splice that's tracking off, and as a result, it catches on something and you'll see maybe part of a splice missing, maybe even part of the belt missing. That happens. What's actually going on there is it catches on something, creates an obstruction, shock loads the tension, something's got to get. So it's either the belt's going to tear or the splice is going to be pulled out. Inspection during shutdown. We want to look at the tail pulley, make sure that it's free of buildup, trap material getting into a tail pulley. What's that going to do to the belt if you've got trap material in there? It's going to go around and around and tear the bottom of the belt, but what else is that doing to the belt? When you got, uh, you got a big rock, so one of those 8-inch minus rocks that uh, Daryl was showing us on that uke a little earlier, what's, what's going to happen that gets trapped in a tail pulley? What's that going to do to a belt? It's going to wear it. It's going to wear it how? It's going to wear it in that spot where it down. Okay, what it's doing is hyper-stretching the fabric at that point. It's, it's making that belt uh, uh, flex over that particular obstruction. 
And by doing so, you're going to create an irregularity in the carcass. It's going to get a memory in that carcass. How's that going to affect tracking? Because the tension is not going to be equalized across the belt anymore, is it? Maintenance foreman had brought us out to look at why we were having uh, an issue with fasteners pulling out. And this was on a belt that was 107 inches wide. Or I'm sorry, no, 107 feet, it's 96 inches wide. Uh, we're talking a four ply, quarter by 16th. And what had happened was the lagging had started to break off in sections and get built up in there and being over tensioned in certain areas and just combing the fastener right out in about you know 18 inch sections and they couldn't figure out what was going on and then we got up there and saw that the lagging had started coming loose in different areas and just balling up kind of like exactly what you're talking about. Was this a, like a weld on strip leg or was it a was it a, a it, bonded leg? It was a you know it was a strip where it slides in. Yeah slide in slide leg yeah. So okay. So what was the symptom was that the splice was fatiguing, correct? And it looked to be a tension failure on the splice, in this case a mechanical splice. And you think lagging played a role in that? Okay, so around the circumference of the drive pulley, he didn't have equalized transmission of power into the belt. So is it likely to assume, remember when Mike was talking earlier about transition distances, and the way that appears on the uh, uh, belt wizard that he was using here on the computer and how the different profiles of the belt look, okay, where the belt was in compression and I guess the tail pulling has to go to neutral bango right away and you'll hear the squeal and that sort of thing. Well, if the surface of the head pulley is not consistent all the way around so that the transmission of torque to the belt is inconsistent as a result of missing pieces of lagging, what do you suppose that does to a splice? It areas it's like it's relaxed, bang, relaxed, bang. Okay, so it's almost like that compression tension thing that we were talking about earlier. So it could very well have contributed. One of the things that I would have looked at would make sure that the tail pulley is large enough too. There's a lot of tail pulleys are going to be winged or self-cleaning type pulleys. And if you're over-tensioning the belt or you're in that above 75% of the belt's rate of tension, wing pulleys can be a real factor in mechanical fastener splice performance. We're going to inspect skirting in the loading area. Is the product being contained? That's what skirting does, right? Flashing or skirting, the words are used simultaneously. There's going to be that which in the loading area, which is going to keep the product contained and going, you know, flying off the edge of the belt. Impact bed or idlers, what kind of condition are they in? An impact bed, you guys are in the impact bed business. I, my question for you would be, is an impact bed is improperly maintained, can it cause tracking issues? Well, it would definitely, if you had it shimmed up too high on one side or build up, your belt's always going to run to what it sees first. So on your impact bed, if it's higher on one side, or what we pay real attention to is center, center roll heights. So if our impact beds are installed too high or too low, that's going to affect your belt splices and also your belt tracking. So it's very important that your center lines are exactly the same. And if you were to see an impact bed as an example where the impact bars on one side were severely worn, but yet they were in near new condition on the other side, that's a symptom of what would you suspect is the, uh, the problem is? Well, one of the things you might look for is off-center loading, that it's getting, the, the belt is getting loaded heavier on one side or the other, thus wearing out one side quicker than the other. So when it's fatiguing out the impact bars on the impact bed at the loading area, and you're fatiguing out part of it first, it's usually because it's taking more stress on that side, so you're side loading the belt, and that's what the problem is. Not the fact that the impact bed is wearing out. It's showing what's going on with the rest of the system. Idler damage. You want to make sure that the idlers are in good working order. Those things got to roll. What happens to the, to the performance of a belt if you got bearings seized up in an idler? Premature wear. Yeah. Well, what you're doing, though, is you're adding friction to the belt, right? It no longer can move freely. You got to drag across that... that um, that idler, 
adding friction, unnecessary friction is very inefficient. And I'm sure Daryl could go into uh, great detail how that affects belt performance. Bend pulleys. What do we want to look at with bend pulleys? Joe? Free debris. Are they free of debris? What's the one thing we know about bend pulleys and snubber pulleys? What's the one different characteristic of those pulleys when they're trying to manipulate the direction of a belt that the head and tail pulley, don't, they don't have in common with the head and the tail pulley? Say it louder. They run on the top side of the belt, don't they? So they're exposed to all the renegade debris that might be on a belt, right? So now we want to look real closely for buildup because the material that's being conveyed can get trapped on those very pulleys. What happens if we got buildup on a pulley? It's going to go to the path of least resistance and it ain't going to be straight. Head pulley, is it clean? Lagging, good shape? I got a pet peeve about calling belt cleaners scrapers, but we got scrapers up here. Scraper sounds like it's just going to peel the rubber off of it. But in effect, we're talking about belt cleaners. What kind of condition are the cleaners in? Snub pulley, we kind of touched on that. We want to make sure that the snub pulley's free of debris. Evidence of frame damage. I had a circumstance once where I had a customer say, hey, I need for you to help me train this belt. I've tried everything. We're going to get into training later, so I'm not going to go through all of it. Well, I had a couple of options available to me using a mechanical trainer to try to keep this belt running straight. And as I'm inspecting it, and he goes, oh, oh, that's where the front end loader hit it. There ain't a mechanical trainer on the planet that's going to train a belt when the structure's out of, that far out of square. It's not going to happen. It's going to happen maybe where the trainer's located, but it didn't, it's going to greatly reduce the effectiveness of a mechanical belt trainer. Plows. What are we talking about when we're talking about plows? We touched on cleaners just a second. They're on the return side. On the return side. Uh, Mike alluded to them earlier this morning. They're on the return side on the inside of the conveyor, right? Usually right above the tail pulley. Right in front of the tail pulley, exactly. And that's to keep renegade debris out of that tail pulley because so oftentimes they're winged and you don't want to get them trapped in there and then causing that same training issue and belt fatigue we talked about earlier. Well, you want to make sure the plows are working. How many people have been on a job site where the plow was a two before? Yeah, those, those work really well. Take up pulley in areas. What do you suppose if we're looking for a take up pulley, a gravity take up pulley, what we want to inspect when we're inspecting a conveyor on a gravity take up? What are we looking for? We're looking to make sure that the slide rails are sliding, don't we? We want to make sure that thing's free. How are we going to do that? Let's say this thing's just running along, doo dee da, and we don't see any movement in the tail pulley and we're getting suspect about it. I mean in the gravity take up pulley. If you have the option, if you have the ability, remember we want to try and inspect this belt when it's running and when it's stopped, start it up. You got it stopped, you got it locked out, unlock it, have your operator start it up again and then take a look and see what the tail, what that gravity take up pulley is doing. If Go for a, it. If there's a lot of rust on a take up frame, that means that slide's not sliding or hasn't been sliding for some time. So. Sometimes you look for shiny metal, worn off paint is actually one of your friends because it's showing that it's moving up and down. And you could also, you know, a lot of, a lot of take ups, they're going to have these buckets, these big boxes where they're going to put counterweight into it. And a lot of times that's tramp steel. They go to the boneyard and get junk, throw them in there. I've even seen circumstances where that thing's bopped up and down enough that some piece of pipe or whatever that they might have thrown in there has gotten out of the bucket and it's actually in the framework preventing it from being able to move, acting like a block. Inspect while running. We want to look at the tail pulley, see if there's any material trapped in it. We want to look at loading areas for spillage. We want to see if the product's being contained. We want to inspect that the carrying idlers, the troughed idlers, are rolling. Head pulley's turning freely. Drive pulley's operating correctly. 
I guess in this case we're making the distinction between the two because the drive is not always going to be at the head pulley. Return idlers are returning freely. Belts tracking, cleaners are cleaning. Take ups moving freely, bend pulleys in the plow. So we want to inspect all of these elements if it's available to us while it's running and when it's not running. 